Now joining us on the Young Turks, Chris Cluey. He is a punter for the Minnesota Vikings and a bit of a badass. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, first of all, Baltimore Ravens linebacker Brendan Iambandejo uh, came out with a statement in favor of gay marriage. And then he was met by uh, Maryland State Delegate Emmett C. Burns Jr., who said that uh, he should basically keep his mouth shut. In fact, he wrote a letter to the owner of the Ravens saying that he should inhibit such expressions from your employees. What planet does this guy live on? And he said, I know of no other NFL player uh, who expresses similar views. Well, he was wrong. That's why Chris spoke out, and Chris joins us now. Now, Chris, uh, welcome to the Young Turks, first of all. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, second of all, uh, I'm going to ask why you s spoke so forcefully. In the letter that you wrote to Mr. Burns, uh, you said he was mind-fucking obscenely hypocritical, a colossal <laughs> foot-in-mouth clusterfuck is what he created, and that uh, being in favor of gay marriage doesn't magically turn you into a lustful cock monster. Uh, yep. So <laughs> those are pretty strong words and fun words. Uh, uh, why so aggressive? Uh, well, you know, to me, this was this was something that, that really kind of infuriated me because he's a, a elected government official who's using the power of his office to try and stifle someone's free speech. I mean, he sent this letter on, on official Maryland state stationery, and then he also referred to his constituents being upset. So there, there's definitely an implicit threat there. And uh, my, my background in writing comes from trolling the WOW Realm forum boards for about four years. So that, that tends to explain some of the colorful insults. <laughs> Where'd you go to school out of curiosity? Uh, went to UCLA. Oh, I, now I see. Now I see what's <laughs> going on. All right. So, Chris, um, what has been uh, the reaction to this letter, either by your colleagues at the Minnesota Vikings or elsewhere? Uh, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, within the Vikings, the uh, the organization has been you know very supportive about my right to to speak out on on stuff that that I feel passionate about. And I've had multiple teammates come up to me and say, you know, hey, I we think you did the right thing. We we think we think you wrote that letter, you know, the the right way. It was the right thing to do. And then on Twitter, um, I've I've had probably over six thousand replies, and ninety nine point nine percent of them have been thank you for saying what we didn't know how to say. And then, you know, you get the, like, five or six trolls that are like, hey, you're, you're dumb, you're a punter, shut up. But we can, we can all say things. <laughs> well, that is a fair point. I mean, uh, it's... It, it, it is true. Yeah, it's... Although, it's although a, I, it's I would say to those people, I, I have written a previous letter addressing that point to one Nate Jackson. You can also find that on Deadspin. <laughs> oh, that, that sounds good. I can't wait for that. Uh, and it is a well-established fact that punters, of course, are allowed to speak less than other people. So, uh, yeah, it's a that, fair that, point. That was... The, that was the point Nate tried to make, and I, I disabused him of that notion. <laughs> you know, before we go back to the gay marriage issue, let me just quickly ask you, speaking of being a punter, um, have you ever tried to tackle Adrian Peterson in practice? No, no, I have not, because he is quite possibly the biggest genetic freak man-child I have ever seen. <laughs> this, is, this is a guy who eats raw cookie dough for a meal and still has, like, 1% body fat. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. In your entire... Uh, football career, have you ever tackled anyone? Uh, yeah, I think I think I had like two tackles last year, and, and I had like three over the, the six-year span before that, but I wouldn't really call them tackles so much as me getting in the way and then them tripping over me as I'm falling over, but you know, I'll, I'll take credit for it. <laughs> Alright, that sounds good. And then I wanted to get back to gay marriage for a second. So look, in all seriousness, there's something interesting going on here. I mean, in the old days, you know, if you came out in favor of gay marriage or gay rights in a football locker room, uh, my guess is that it would not have gone well. So is your experience that the locker rooms now are dramatically changed? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely a, a cultural shift going on, and, and you can really see it because the NFL is filled with the younger generation of, of athletes every single year because there's always younger guys cycling in from college. And, you know, you, you look at it, and there's, there's this feeling amongst guys that, Hey, what's the big deal? You know, why why do we really care about this? Because I can live my life. Why shouldn't other people be allowed to live their life? That's great to hear. Absolutely. Is there uh, any out uh, football players right now that you know? Uh, no, not, none that I know of. Um, you know, I, I just I hopefully someone does come out at some point because you know t the first person to to break through that that door is going to have it a little rough because there won't be people that understand, but. It'll definitely pave the way for, for other people to do so. And, and the feeling really is, is if, if that's who you are, so we, we will support you. 
because all that matters is how do you play on Sunday? Can you help this team win? Right, absolutely. And my understanding is that gay people can block and tackle just as well as straight people. Now, right, yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, 1962 was when the NFL was um, desegregated uh, and that there was, in fact, segregation up until then. That's amazing. That was in your letter to the uh, state delegate there. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I didn't remember that. So, w can you tell me a little bit about that? I mean, because I think a lot of people might hear that and go, 1962, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, exactly. It was the, the Washington Redskins. They were the, the last team in the NFL to finally desegregate. And um, full full editorial disclosure, I went to uh, Wikipedia and a couple other sources to make sure I was right on that. So, <laughs> That's I, good I, journalism. That's my background first. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where people don't realize that this is this is a, a an issue. It's a civil rights issue, just the same as segregation, as suffrage, as, as slavery. It just has a different name. All right, that's terrific, Chris. All right, t final two uh, punter questions for you. Uh, okay. Who is your favorite punter of all time? Favorite punter of all time? Um, I'm going to go with Ray Guy just because everyone knows who he is. Uh, I didn't really watch sports growing up, so. <laughs> Chris, that's <laughs> incredibly really strange. Is. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm more of a, a book reader and uh, video game playing guy. So you never even watched football? You didn't watch the NFL before you got in the NFL? No, no, I, I'd never even really watch TV. I'd, I'd rather play video games on my TV. Wow. Uh, I don't know if that I have more respect for you or less respect of you, for you, <laughs> given those facts. <laughs> it's a toss-up. All right, and then finally, uh, since you're the punter, do you go into every single game thinking, God, I hope they never use me? Exactly. My my main goal in a game is to only go out to hold for field goals and extra points. That's that's a perfect game for me, is if I never do my job. Oh, good, good question by Jesus. Chris, how did you wind up playing football if you never even watched it? <laughs> well, I played baseball and soccer growing up, and then uh, in high school I needed a fall sport because the, the soccer team wouldn't let you practice with them if you hadn't been on the team the year before. So I figured, you know, I, I can kick a soccer ball pretty well. Might as well see if I can kick a football. And, uh, yeah, it, it worked out all right for me. Do you have any idea what happens in a football game? <laughs> I've, I've picked up some by osmosis over the years. Okay. I know, I, I know you score touch goals at some point. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or am I? <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Chris Cluey from the Minnesota Vikings, a character and one we really like on the Young Turks. Great letter, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.